Mr. President, I'm proud to join with Chairman Leahy and Senator Grassley in sponsoring the Fraud Enforcement Recovery Act. I applaud their leadership on this issue. I also want to note the significant contributions of Senator Schumer and Klobuchar, who have joined us on this bill and have improved it in important ways. Today's economic crisis has many causes, from serious regulatory failures to recklessness and greed. While we're learning more each day about what happened, one thing is certain now. Financial fraud contributed mightily to this economic collapse. It's the job of law enforcement to ferret out the behavior that was criminal, as opposed to merely reckless, foolish, or unethical. Yet I am certain that in the complex web of systemic failures that have caused devastating harm to so many Americans, law enforcement will uncover a continuum of behavior and requisite blame. At one end will be those responsible bankers and mortgage brokers who never engaged in unduly risky behavior. There will also be those on the continuum who are merely reckless and base their business plans on the false assumptions that housing values would also increase, always increase. But the continuum will be anchored on the other end, by mortgage brokers who promoted fraud, and by bankers and financiers who deliberately ignored excessive risk in designing mortgage-related products, and then hid those risks from investors while self-dealing and lining their own pockets. Those people, in my view, should be targets of the FBI. If we want to restore the public's faith in our financial markets and in the rule of law, then we must identify, prosecute, and send to prison those individuals who broke the law. Their fraudulent conduct has severely damaged our economy and harmed har countless hardworking Americans. The public needs to know, then, when mortgage brokers or credit raiders or Wall Street bankers break the law, they'll be treated like the criminals they are. We can't have one set of rules for people who rob banks and another set of rules for banks who rob people. Unfortunately, our law enforcement agencies do not have the resources they need to do this job. Right after September 11th, federal law enforcement resources were shifted dramatically and understandably to counterterrorism. Regrettably, they have not been replaced. As a result, our capacity to investigate and prosecute financial crimes has been severely depleted. At the height of the savings and loan crisis, as many as 1,000 FBI agents were investigating financial fraud. As of last month, there were fewer than 250. And no one doubts that the scope of the problem today is far greater than it was during the SNL crisis. That's why the Fraud Enforcement Recovery Act begins by providing the resources necessary to rebuild the nation's white collar enforcement program. Building this capacity is doubly important today, given the substantial federal funds being spent in connection with bailout and recovery programs. We need the investigators and analysts in place as soon as possible not only to uncover and prosecute crimes that have already occurred, but also to deter future crimes. Prosecuting bad behavior won't put an end to bad behavior, but it will have an impact on those in the mortgage industry, on the trading desks, and in the boardrooms who might be tempted to put greed ahead of law. The bill authorizes $165 million a year for hiring fraud investigators and prosecutors at the Department of Justice for fiscal years 2010 and 2011. That includes $75 million in 2010 and $65 million in 2011 for the FBI to add 190 agents and 200 professional staff and forensic analysts. The bill also includes $50 million a year for U.S. Attorney's offices, where much of the financial crime prosecution takes place, and $40 million for the criminal, civil, and tax divisions of Maine Justice to provide special litigation and investigative support. Finally. The bill authorizes $80 million a year over the next two years for investigators and analysts at the Postal Inspection Service, the Secret Service, and the Inspector General at HUD, all to combat fraud. This authorization, $490 million over the next two fiscal year, is modest given the work that needs to be done. It's also an investment. History tells us that funds spent on fraud enforcement net money for the government at a rate of about $15 recovered for every dollar spent. Let me repeat that. History tells us that funds spent on fraud enforcement net money for the government at a rate of $15 recovered for every dollar spent. In so many ways, this is an investment we cannot afford not to make. Beyond providing resources, this bill modernized several critical areas of federal fraud law, ensuring that prosecutors have the tools necessary to combat past and future financial fraud. 
Chairman Leahy and Senator Grassley have spelled out these changes in some detail. I want to highlight a couple of points. First, the bill updates, updates the definition of financial institution in federal fraud statutes to cover mortgage lending businesses that are not directly regulated or insured by the federal government. These are businesses that were responsible for close to half of the residential mortgage market before the economic collapse. Just last month, FBI Director Mueller stated this single change would be tremendously helpful in the fight against mortgage fraud. The bill also amends federal fraud law to protect funds expended under both the Troubled Asset Recovery Program and the Economic Recovery Act. The federal government has provided extraordinary financial support to our banking system, and we need to protect those funds against fraud and abuse. Finally, I note that the bill provides narrow but important fixes to Supreme Court decisions in the areas of money laundering and the False Claims Act. Here, as in the rest of the bill, we have taken an approach that is both carefully considered and precisely targeted. We are not creating new crimes or establishing entirely new paths to recovering ill-gotten gains. Instead, we focused on making narrow changes that make sure lawbreakers don't slip through the gaps in existing law. Complex and sophisticated crimes demand a broad-based and sophisticated response. In terms of crimes already committed, we cannot afford to let the trail get cold. In terms of future crimes, we must provide both the legal tools and the law enforcement resources necessary to make would-be criminals think twice before allowing their greed to do such terrible damage. This is not about vengeance or politics. In our haste to target wrongdoers, we should not paint the entire banking industry with a broad brush. Banks struggling to make loans during a deep recession are not bad actors. Indeed, those who avoided the subprime market, avoided securitized pools of subprime mortgages, and never traded in credit default swaps were, in hindsight, models of discipline and prudential management during an era when many lost their heads to greed. Those banks should be, those banks should be applauded and supported as they continue to work their way through difficult times in a very challenging real estate market. The wrongdoers will be known by their deeds and held accountable to the law by a jury, not by the needs to scapegoat an entire industry or a few sacrificial lambs to satisfy popular anger. There will be telltale signs for law enforcement to investigate, to find those who used inside information to bail out early while failing to disclose material information, to investigate traders who hid and distorted their trading books until they cashed out a huge bonus, to target mortgage back brokers who repeatedly and fraudulently induced mortgage loans, which they could quickly package and sell without any responsibility for the ticking time bombs that became weapons of mass financial destruction. Frauds of the sort addressed by this bill attack the heart of our financial system. For our economy work for every American, we must restore the public's faith that no one from Main Street to Wall Street is above the law. Speaking of Main Street, the people I talk to are very patient as we work hard to get the financial system and the economy back on track. They understand that this will be a long process and that we cannot expect immediate returns on the significant federal investments made in recent months. At the same time, they rightly expect the federal government to spend the time and money necessary to bring to justice the criminals who helped create the crisis in the first place. The authorization of this bill, $490 million over the next two years, are very modest, modest in light of the enormity of the crisis. The American public will not understand if we refuse to make this small investment in order to restore public confidence both in the markets and the rule of law. Mr. President, I again want to thank Chairman Leahy and Senator Grassley for the leadership in this issue, and I urge my colleagues to support this bill. I yield.